Welcome back to this show, a man who I've been a fan of for so many years from Swingers and Office Space, Band of Brothers, Boardwalk Empire, currently in a million little things on ABC. But tomorrow night, Tuesday night, back here on Audience, the AT&T original series, Louder Milk, starring this man, Ron Livingston. Good to see you, sir. You too, Rich. Right back at you. Appreciate you coming back here. Certainly on a day I thought, okay, Ron's going to be on on Monday. Yeah. Bears, Bears coming off a of bye week. Yeah. They're in Miami. Miami's a stout team. Yeah. But I'm sitting on game day morning, uh, the pregame show on the NFL Network yesterday, Ron, and, and and Brock Osweiler shows up for the Dolphins. And I thought, like, that was fresh Khalil Mack uh, lunch yeah. meat right there. Uh, what did you think going to that game yesterday? You know, I, I, I took it for granted a little bit, more than I should. <laughs> right. I thought we had that one in the bag. But, um, yeah, man, the Dolphins, they, you got to – First of all, we got we have a history with the Dolphins. Uh, you got to remember, all of our Super Bowl teams lost to the Dolphins in Miami. So that's, this is our year. That's right, right, <laughs> right. Right. And I, I feel about as good about it as you can about a, an overtime loss like that. It was a we, you know what I mean? Like you had a lot of miscues, you had a lot of mistakes, and yet we still had the shot to 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 win the game a couple of times. Didn't come together this time, but I, I, I just, I love this team. Yeah, you do like them. You're in, you're, you're, you're fired too up. Too much. My wife says too much. What do you mean? What, you know? Give me an example of too much. Uh, I just get, I get really worked up about it. You, you know strike what I mean? me as a guy that gets worked up much. I, Ron, it's it's the only thing, you know, like I don't, I don't sweat my own shows nearly as much as, uh, as I sweat the Chicago bears. Uh, I don't know. It just gives me something to get excited. So about. now, do you have to watch alone? Like, is that? Well, weird? I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old, right? <laughs> so that changed everything. You know, like in my twenties, yeah. I watched it with a group of guys, sure. and then they all start getting married off and disappearing, and you know, and you're wondering where's everybody going. And then you know, you get married, and all of a sudden, it's not, uh, you know. And now I'm like DVR in it and trying to. Avoid. I got to watch it the first half live yesterday and the mm -hmm. second half without anybody telling me what happened. But um, sports blackout's a difficult thing in the twenty first century. It's really Ron. hard. There's a lot of like. Sometimes I gotta wait till Tuesday. Going la 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 la. You know. It's, Tuesday. You sometimes can stay. Uh, keep five this. year. Five year old and a two year old. Some. I just have no choice sometimes. Kid. It's what. It's the sacrifices that you make. Parenthood for a family. Yes, you did. Right. <laughs> well. Chicago Bears football in the mm. last couple of years, you could sacrifice. But right now, yeah. I, I I just sense there's – we had, again, your coach, Matt Nagy, was on the show a couple weeks ago. Love him. He was awesome. Yeah. He was awesome. Like, he he gets it. He he understands, you know, what how to communicate in the 21st century, and, uh, and they're dialing up all of this stuff. Trubisky looks like he's – He's got the right guy. Do you at know his what side. impressed me actually, uh, especially about Mitch, besides you know coming out at halftime and and, and really putting it together, mm -hmm. um, his his uh, post game his post game interview okay. was uh, a little different side of him. Uh, I missed was, it. What was oh, it? Oh, you know he was um, there was one of the reporters asked him you know about the interception, mm -hmm. and I think and he looked at him and he said. Uh, yeah, you like those interception questions. Thank you. I can always count on you for that. I don't know. There's a little bit oh. of an there's a little bit of an edge to him. Oh. And uh, I I like to see it on him because I I feel like he came into the league. I'm not gonna. I don't want to say Boy Scout, but he came into the league as a guy that wanted to be wanted to be doing the right thing and mm. wanted to be doing what he was asked to do. Like and Bambi out of North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, you know what I mean. And like wanting to be liked. And I I really got like wanting to set himself up as leader of the team. I, I feel like he's he's becoming the leader of the team. Well, I think Chicago, you know, Chris over there is from uh, New England, and Chicago, mm. New England, Philly, oh, yeah. and New York, we kind of like our sports with a little attitude. Yeah. You know, you don't want somebody to – you want somebody to – Jim McMahon. There you go. The punky QB. Yeah. Putting McMahon on his, uh, on his headband <laughs> yeah. back in the day. You know, Roselle. He put Roselle on his headband right there. You know, yeah. So, McMichael, Steve McMichael. You want that sort of stuff? Yeah, you want you want uh, you. I think you want guys that, you know, have have one foot in the asylum. You got. I think every good defense has to have three guys that have one foot in the asylum. And I'm, I'm not sure who ours would be, but uh, yeah, I can okay. take some guesses. Are you that way about the Bulls too, or is it just the no. Bears? Or 
really no, excited. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I, you know, I'm a spoiled sort of fair weather Bulls fan. I okay. was, I lived there uh, for the first three championships, and uh, you know, and then what I kind of like in the town then. I mean, when Jordan it's crazy. was crazy, cars were getting tipped off. I mean, it was ah, oh, so great. It was exciting because it in in those days. You could be, you could go into the fourth quarter, fifteen behind, and and you knew we were going to win the game because mm-hmm. you knew Michael was just going to like put the cape on and and uh, and you know and make it happen. And mm-hmm. it was it was a lot of fun to watch. Ron Livingston here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. How come you're not on Twitter or Instagram or anything like uh, that? You just, just tap out. Just, I'm old. I think. Uh, how, how, how old are you? I'm old and antisocial. You know, so okay. like I don't need, you know. So you're perfect to play louder yeah. milk. <laughs> like if they had anti-social media, I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. My my wife's on Instagram, but uh, is got a private account, mm-hmm. and and I'm like, you know, they Rawr. call it social media. Social you know, media, yeah, yes. like not anti-social media. It's called social media. Right. So that's it. Seems... So you don't even you don't even do that. Well, that's a no. by the way, that's a good way to keep sports blackout. Is if you're not on Twitter or anything like that. Yeah, it's it's tough because I'll get texts from my father-in-law, you know, when they win, and I've tried to teach him to like, no, you can't. I don't don't do that. So he's got to maybe give you the the are you are you? You know winner? what's the worst Text? is the people that feel like they have a great poker face and they can like. Go, oh, yeah, no, I'm not going to, you know what I mean? But you can usually read whether they I tell they people when know? I'm in sports blackout, don't even tell me that you anything. know the score because I'm going to start reading you. Like, yeah. So if you're telling me that you know the score, does that mean that it's going to upset me? Right. Or you know it's going to make me happy? And I don't want to go through all of that. No. So just don't say a damn thing. Yeah, let me just watch the game. But and- the problem, Ron, Ron with sports blackout is yeah. somebody who doesn't know anything about sports but it's such a big game that you, for whatever reason, could not watch live. Yeah. They will just finally just try and connect with you on that front and just yeah. blurt out the score. Like, you don't know where it's they coming from. They can't keep from. it in. Yeah. And, well, you know, the other big problem about it is if you watch a game live, it's, it's you know, three hours of heart attack. Mm-hmm. If you spread it out, if you're not watching it till Tuesday, I, I, it's like ulcer. You know what I mean? Because it's not like I'm not thinking about it on Sunday or Monday. I guess I, you know, obviously we do what we do for a living here. I can't even conceive waiting two days to see. I know, this yeah. Or done. But yeah. you know, you got your you job got, description. You got a lot. You got a lot going on in your world. Uh, Louder Milk starting tomorrow night right here on Audience. We're very excited about it here uh, on campus. Um, you know, you've been working on this show for for a couple of years now. What's going on with your with this show and your character and what's happening on this program? So, um, th- it's really taking off. You know, this show is kind of blossoming in the second season. Uh, my favorite thing about it is it, the world is just populated with uh, with all these kind of um, misfits and numbskulls played by fantastic actors. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the first season, you got to kind of focus on, you know, the main guy and then maybe the friend of the main guy and a couple of people. And, uh, and I feel like in the second season, we know everybody well enough that we can... Uh, that there's a lot of scene stealing moments that that these guys get to do now mm-hmm. um that i feel like they didn't necessarily have the opportunity for that in season one now do you enjoy playing somebody who oh. suffers no fools gladly and just walks around and just tells everybody what's I love on your it. mind i love it it's like a free pass um you know it it's uh it's the only it's the only jack usually you come in and there's you you bring you try to bring all yourself into the into the studio and mm-hmm. there's about half of yourself that they make you leave outside because mm-hmm. uh, most shows are are based around the idea that you know people are trying to be their best selves and their most noble selves and uh louder milk is not he's he's uh he just embraces all his flaws he's the you know He's the biggest a hole in the world. Wakes up miserable, <laughs> takes it out on everybody, and uh, and then the next day does the same thing. So it's a, it's a blast to be able to to do that on television. Yeah, and uh, again, it's on uh, Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on Audience uh, AT and T original series. Um, I, I would love to play celebrity, true or false, with you, if that's okay. Sure. Various parts of uh, your previous interviews and various parts of the internet have collected a few facts and mm. want to know if it's true or false. Okay. Here with Ron Levitz. Celebrity, true. Keeping it real. Or false. First up, you once sang backup for Cindy Lauper. True yes, or false? Yes, true. Okay. What what gives? Uh, what? Crazy, right? Um, yeah, you know what it was is uh, 
back before Glee and back before like acapella became cool again. Yes. Uh, I you know was in an acapella group in in college, and uh, Cindy Lauper was in town uh, for a concert. Happened to come to the you know the club that we, we had a sort of weekly gig at, and uh, asked us to come and you know do join her show and sing backups for her. So there for one show mm -hmm. in New Haven, Connecticut, uh, <laughs> I got to sing uh, backups for Cindy Lauper. Which which songs? Time after time, it was we did one of our songs and then it like it medleyed into time after time. And how'd you do? I mean, how'd you, I how thought good we were you? pretty good. The um, you, you know, it was a bit of a disaster <laughs> in that uh, um, you know, I'm a Yaley and the uh, and uh, the the New Haven kids, you know, uh, the, they were like, oh, we came to see a rock and roll show, and why do we got to watch these you fools guys. up there? So, mm -hmm. um, okay. yeah, it was a, it was a tough crowd. But okay. uh, but yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Bucket Fe list. Your feature your feature film debut was Straight Talk with Dolly Parton in the role of Soldier. Is that a true story? That's true. I danced with her. So you've sang with Cindy Lauper mm -hmm. and you've danced with Dolly Parton. Yeah. I yeah, and I the, the bit oh was God. I was I grabbed her ass. So uh, that was the, the okay. Bit. That was the bit. That was my first film bit. And oh, she was. I mean. <laughs> I can't even like. She was lovely. Okay, you know, you and I you're... was. It was my. It was new and green and starstruck, and she couldn't have just been more uh, welcoming and you know so trying to calm to, me to, down. To play your yeah, role. you know, she. It was. Uh, it was great. It was. She was awesome. So Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton and Cindy Lauper. I'm. I'm wondering Icons. where we can go for the. We go for the triple crown here, um, and then the last one. You told me just before you came on, you were handed a three iron on the set of Swingers. Yes. Is that a true story? Uh, about, yeah. What's this about now? Again? There's a golf scene in, uh, in where uh, John Favreau and I are playing on a pitch and putt, and um, but apparently the props guy was just told go get a couple of janky looking used clubs and and. Uh, and uh, apparently they didn't know golf, so it's um, he brought like a three iron, of, you know, <laughs> and I, like a driver or something like that. And uh, you know, I'm standing here, and the camera is about not much further away than you, mm -hmm. and I don't have any loft at all. So uh, there was actually a shot where I hit it perfectly, like straight at the lens. It would have broken the lens if the uh, if the uh, DP hadn't like stepped in front of it and he actually caught the he caught a four iron to his light meter and uh <laughs> and we lost the light meter that day but we didn't lose the but dp we didn't lose, yeah, we didn't lose, yeah we didn't lose the dp or the camera damn yeah ron i appreciate you coming on good luck to your bears moving forward and obviously yes. the louder milk season two premieres tomorrow night right here on audience the rich eisen show weekdays at noon eastern on audience